I am here with Nahum Mantra, or Nahum Just Nahum. Al. And we are walking in Kurt Bossator area. And I have some questions to do for him. And the first one is about the contemporary scene of space culture. Hi, Nahum. Hello, Abi, how are you? Good. Good. Uh, tell us about the contemporary scene of space culture. I think I think what it's I, th I think what right now we have um, a lot of responsibility to to get even more involved. I mean, if you see what's happening in in, in space exploration, you'll see that there's a there's a new shift, which means that uh, national space agencies are actually letting private companies to develop technology which on the one hand you would say that that's part of the democratization of our space technology and our space activities but on the other side i think now more than ever it's like extremely important that other actors from society get involved as well it's actually i believe it's very urgent because as we have seen it in other fields of activities of humankind, uh, when you when you leave alone these activities to the market or defense interests, then you will see that the outcomes uh, sometimes they could be very I wouldn't I don't know if disastrous, but I think. This is where we have to get involved. We have to bring in the critical views. We have to ask the difficult questions that nobody wants to ask. And in the same fashion that you can see it now with climate change, you know, like for so many years, we, we've been having a very big impact on our planet and no one asked if it was okay, if we were actually doing any harm, if, there, if we were we completely ignored that we inhabit this planet with many other beings and that Earth, in a way, is a, is a living system. Um, and today we're seeing the effects. So, um, so we have to bring in these this, this critical positions. And by critical doesn't mean to be pessimist. It, it, it means to, to, to think thoroughly about what we're doing, why we're doing it, and what will be the best possible way of doing it for not only a group of people, not only two groups of people, but for everyone. And that's difficult. It needs a lot of agreements, difficult negotiations, but I think it's so important. I mean, today, the, the big next step in space exploration is definitely Mars. And which is great, it's, we've been waiting for it many years. But if we hear the people that will make it happen, the companies that will make it happen, if, we, if they keep saying, let's colonize Mars, it's like, okay, stop there. What does it mean to colonize? We have done it in our planet before. Many regions, many continents on this planet were colonized. And did it work? I don't know, I come from Latin America and and just look at the number of PhD students studying colonial and post-colonial studies. It's a big issue. There's a lot of discussion. It, it created many troubles, many, a lot of trauma, problems of cultural identity, etc. So, okay, I, do we want to replicate the, the actions that we have had on our planet and take it to another planet? colonization is, 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 is about assuming political control over a territory, imposing a culture over other culture, imposing a, a, a way of life on, a, on a, an existing life form. So I think if, we are, if it's going to happen and we go to Mars, it's like also a brilliant opportunity to find new ways of doing this in a responsible way in a in a in a more harmonious uh, fashion and this is where we have to 
uh, participate, you know, like these activities. They are about everything. Space exploration is not about science. It's about any, any field of human activity exists in space. Space law, space medicine, space food, space architecture, space design, space anthropology, space uh, feminism, everything. So we all have to participate. And I think our artists were good at being a catalyst for these processes, for engaging people and working together. So I always see that artists are the first ones to knock the doors of the, of the lab, of the scientist door and say like, hey, I'm here. I want to do something with you. So um, just interrupt. Uh, how is your relationship in Itacus? Um, with the scientists and the astronomers as artists, how, how it uh, how it works? Yeah, well, Itacus is the technical activities committee for the cultural utilizations of space that is inside the International Astronautical Federation. Um, something that I'm always, I mean, as, as much as I defend the arts and the humanities, I also defend um, the space community. These people are are the most clever you can see around. So as soon as you start like engaging in a conversation about these topics, they understand rather quickly. Um, and that's something that happened with Itacus. At some point, there were a group of scientists and space professionals that had a really uh, deep interest in, in arts or that had been engaged in arts activities like Roger Malina. And they were like, okay, if the Space Federation has uh, committees for everything, almost everything, we should have one about arts. So, and the, and the Federation accepted it. So it's a great acknowledgement that it is important, that culture and arts in outer space matter. So it's... Uh, yeah, it's great. Some people say that, oh, but that's that's officializing things. That's like making it part of the system. Great. Yes. Yes, we have to be part of it. We cannot be DIY. Of course, those approaches also work uh, on, a, on a grassroots level. But yes, you know, you want to be in the same room where the decisions are being made, where the key people are and just the fact that artists we have this this group it's it's an interface to speaking to the real uh, people so that's it Copenhagen Suborbitals was a, was a yeah a very interesting group because they were actually developing their own technology uh, and then when they separated they they kept working on on, on different on different ways um, well yeah I mean right now it's a, we, we know what is happening with with one of the founders and it's, it's of course tragic and we, there are still so many questions but I think when it comes to DIY projects civilian projects it's yeah it's great I mean that's how that's and that's how uh, civilian science uh, works. Uh, like uh, Elon Musk is a kind of uh, civil. Well, Elon Musk. Uh, yeah, it's a, Elon Musk is a is a very clever guy that that took old uh, or well known models of rockets. He studied. He 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 actually knows a lot. He like Elon Musk himself. He's a rocket expert. We can have a really deep conversation about rockets with him. He understands pretty much all the science of rockets, but he was very clever to to make it financially and cost efficient. So he's trying to introduce uh, the market logic into space exploration, something that uh, national space agencies 
having done, and that's that's a contribution, of course. Again, um, SpaceX is open for artist uh, projects, for example. I don't have any knowledge of they being open or being one of their priorities. I think they they are still trying to figure out how to get their technology work in the best possible way, developing new new technologies. And but it's something that I think it's positive is that companies like SpaceX, like Blue Origins, the um, the, the the amount of risk. That they hand that they handle in the projects is enormous. It's enormous. They're taking a lot of risks. So that means I want to think that that means that this they are more adventurous to to come up with ideas like yeah let's have artists in house. But I think right now it's an early stage and they're like I mean, sure enough they, they they've got their priorities which is like let's make it work but i think it yeah they i mean there are satellite companies that have artists in residence programs and, and they explore they're more experimental than space agencies national space agencies are like big machines that depend on on on, on government's funding so they want to look a little bit conservative to politicians so they can have their funding so they don't do many a lot of risky things like yeah, let's have a crazy artist doing something here. And if they use artists, sometimes it's just for science communication purposes, which is okay, but I think uh, uh, there's much more power in having an artist and just illustrating what they're doing. And um, about Art Catalyst, um, how, how will you get involved with that? Well, and um, tell us as well about how uh, they are thinking now with all these um, post-colonial uh, issues that you <coughs> brought oh. in your first um, talk. Uh, if they are into that and, um, well, how, how is it now? How are you, was your involve, how you got involved with that? Well, the, something amazing about the Arts Catalyst is that they are always like five steps ahead from everyone. Uh, before many people were doing things with synthet synthetic biology or space or they were already doing it like 20 years ago it's, it's fantastic now they were doing projects with nuclear uh, uh, things uh, and now they I mean in conversations I had with Nicola Trisco the founder I mean we even thought that I don't know that sometimes I think they do something called post art and science you know like they are going so much beyond like a lot of artists playing with science nowadays they are they are exploring the language of science they are exploring the tools and the possibilities and um, and, 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 and playing a lot which is fantastic yeah, it's also like an appropriation of a field that only belong uh, belong to science but but again the, the, the arts catalyst i mean their positions are brilliant they're like well, yeah um the arts catalyst um it's a, it's a super inspiring company uh, i mean just the projects that they are doing now with radical ancestry you know like we, we, right now that there is so much I mean, this discussion is, we haven't got over it, you know, about racial differences. So, okay, what's ancestry? What's our common ancestry? You know, the common, the commons. What are the commons? Who owns the atmosphere? Who owns the hydrosphere, the geosphere, the biosphere? Can they be owned? You know, like, how can we see things beyond the traditional frameworks that we have. And Arts Catalyst, they, they have a brilliant way of addressing all these, all these points. Um, yeah, it's a highly uh, inspiring organization. Everyone should look at their work. Are you a curator as well, no? I'm an associate artist. 
Okay. And um, do you think um, it changed a lot uh, since when? Since when are you working with space culture? Since two thousand and eight. Do you think it um, changed in in which way the projects, artist projects, changing these um, ten years you are working with? Yeah, it's changed. Um, it, yeah, I. That's a good question. I don't think it has changed. I, I, I hope it's, it's changing. I hope uh, more people are getting involved in, in, in these activities. Um, uh, I mean, right now, a lot of space data is available. So there are artists to, uh, working on this, uh, with, with this, with this data, still access to, to the to the launch platforms and uh, access to the International Space Station and access to astronauts, that's still very difficult. Um, I don't think that has changed much. Um, actually, it might be more difficult now. Space agencies have less money nowadays. Uh, so they, are, they work with little resources and they really don't want to scare <laughs> their politicians. So they, you know, sometimes it feels that they are uh, more conservative. That's, it's comp compensating because uh, as, as I get a little bit more conservative, there are like these new companies that definitely are, are, are wild. Um, and um, we, we know you had organized um you organized um a excursion of a gravity zero gravity uh, of some um, mexican artists and yes it was uh, when when was it it was in october 2014 in the gagarin cosmonaut training center yeah and uh, how was it uh, how how was it for Mexican artists as well? Ah, it was fantastic. It's, it's, I think it was a, a beautiful project. Um, it, Zero Gravity Arts had existed before this project, of course, uh, pioneered by the Arts Catalyst. I personally, I really don't care about this first culture. You know, like the first thing in space, the first artist in space, the first art piece here. It's. That's if you're you're, you're 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 losing the point. The point is how we can enrich the conversations that we are having, and how you can add value to that. Just being the first one doesn't make any 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 big difference because in any case, what is the first artist in space? Pedro Duque. He plays. He's an astronaut and he plays the keyboards. Leonov, uh, the first uh, human to do a uh, EVA. He, he is a painter, you know, like, it's, it's, we don't want those categories anymore. We want conversations, we want to engage. And I think that's what uh, Mars of Gravity did, you know, like to, 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 to say like, for example, Mexico, a country that has very, very minimal space activities, that we didn't have an, we don't have a natural relationship with space exploration but on the other hand uh, it had it has other things it has uh, it has very strong magical thinking in many ways you know like indigenous cultures and I mean the Spanish culture you know like this clash of two two magical cultures created something very interesting so that the angle from which you can see things from Mexico and Latin America it's it's very unique from that the one in Europe or in North America uh, so we did it and it was a very political project and it's actually a trilogy of projects right now we're working on the next two projects um, about the forces of the universe but from a, in my work uh, I, I like to exp explore things from a personal and intimate point of view, you know? Mm. 
And um, well, in Cosmica, Cosmica is a festival of art space. I would <laughs> like you tell us just yeah. uh, resume the history uh, of it and how is it now and where it goes. Yeah. Well, Cosmica. Today, Cosmica is a is a is a global institute that focuses on on the cultural, critical, and poetic aspects of space exploration activities and the impact that they have on Earth. Uh, it started in 2011, 2010, 2011, in, the, in London, uh, with all the support of the Arts Catalyst. And, and yeah, we started doing this like series of events. In the beginning it was monthly events, then in Mexico, we started doing festivals, uh, and now we're doing our own projects, and we're doing a, uh, workshops and educational programs for refugees, uh, things about climate change, we're writing books. We focus on three things. Uh, one thing is um, diversity in space, and here we talk about space feminism, queer culture in space, indigenous communities, Etc. Uh, second point, uh, it's Earth systems. So like from a cosmic perspective, how do we see Earth? How do we? How can we see it as a system? What we're talking about, uh, before uh, as a series of systems, you know? Like um, and here we work with um, Earth without borders. You know, like how can we envision a planet and not countries? You know, like mm -hmm. uh, countries. It's a, I think it's an outdated um, a, a frame, framework and I think we, it's time to start thinking about new ways uh, that could benefit everyone. Also the, the movement of life, you know, like life moves for many reasons. Genes have moved all over the planet. Uh, when, so we shouldn't get scandalized by people moving today people wanting to move for safety for better opportunities for love people move we have always moved and so it's like how can we support this it's important uh, and the third thing that we talk about is is the future you know like the future of life the future of humanity uh, these new imaginaries so here we work a lot with artists, of course, science fiction, etc. So these three are the big focuses of Cosmica. Um, and, and yeah, Cosmica is a, even though it's a, you, you will say it's a culture, arts, space, institute, all our activities talk to people. We're not talking to the cosmos, we're talking to people. So we want to engage people in these discussions because it's about the, the, the current challenges that we have and about our future. But from the space perspective, it's a beautiful perspective where you can see things with a different angle, with a different optic that mm -hmm. can bring so, so much knowledge. Uh, so we can, yeah, we can walk together better growing together okay um thank you Nahum. You're welcome and Abby. do you want to say something else um the last no words? just just follow cosmica social media uh, uh, cosmica with k o s m i c a so yeah follow us and you, you'll see what we're talking about